everybody and welcome to the month of November. This month we're using our Bible and we're looking at stories and verses found here that teach us about gratitude, about being grateful. That's another way of saying being thankful. So I'm so excited to dive into my Bible today and look at this story. The story that we're going to look at today comes from one of the Gospels. Do you know what that means? If it's one of the Gospels, where can we find it in our Bible? We can find it in the New Testament. This book that we're going to be looking at today is the book of Luke. Now, Luke didn't actually really know Jesus, but he was good friends with a lot of Jesus' good friends. And the Bible tells us that Luke was a doctor. So what that means is he was really good at noticing the details. And he wrote down lots of details that we can find in that book of the Bible, in the book of Luke. So you can find this story in Luke 17. And I figured I could tell this story to you and you could just watch me talk or I could expect for you to help me and participate with me. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tell the story, but then I want you to participate too. And I mean, all of you, everybody who's watching this video, I want you to all do it. So let's have a little practice and see how you do. I'm gonna hold up a sign and whatever it says on the sign, I want you to do that thing. Okay, so you ready? Are we ready to practice? Are you? Are, are you ready to practice? And you? Okay. Here we go. Here's the first one. Good. Okay. I don't know that everybody participated yet. So let's see if you, how about this one? Very good. Very good. And then let's try one more and then we'll get ready to tell the story. Ah, oh, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. So in this story, in the book of Luke, we are studying about the life of Jesus. That's what we know about the Gospels. The Gospels tell us all kinds of things about Jesus' life. From when he was born as a little bitty baby, as he grew up as a little boy, and then as he was a man and doing ministry and walking and talking and performing miracles, all of those stories can be found in the Gospels. And today's story we know it's found in the book of Luke, and it is about Jesus as he was a man. He was doing ministry. He was performing miracles, and at this time, he was traveling on a road between Galilee and Samaria. Now, here's the deal. These two places didn't really get along. The Christians, the Jewish people who were from Galilee and Jerusalem, they did not get along well with the people who were from Samaria. Okay, so you just got to know that. But in this story, Jesus is traveling on his way through Samaria. And we don't know how he was traveling. The Bible didn't tell us what he was traveling on. Maybe he was riding a, a bear. Uh, probably not. But maybe he was riding this. Okay, okay, maybe, or maybe he wasn't riding on any animal at all, and he was just walking. So can you walk in place? Very good. All right, so we know that the people who lived in Samaria and the people who lived in Galilee didn't get along. They were not friends, right, at all. But here's what happened. There was, as he was traveling along the way, Jesus encountered a group of men. There were 10 men actually, and they were, they were outside of the city and they were all alone and they were very sick. They had leprosy, they had, uh, they had itchy skin and they felt terrible. And the doctors and the priests in Samaria had sent them away. They were living way outside of a town because they were afraid that other people would get sick if they were around these men. Well, these men, they see Jesus coming towards them, and here's what they say. Jesus! And then they say, Master! Jesus! Master! Have pity on us. So these men have heard about Jesus. They've heard about the work that he is doing and that he is performing miracles. He's making people come back to life. He's making people who are sick, healthy again. And they wanted that for themselves. So Jesus comes up to them and he says, oh, you're sick. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to go and see the priest. 
these men might have been really confused by that. They may have, they may have thought, what, what, we've already been to see the priest. Okay, so you're wondering, why would they go see the priest? Because the priest is kind of like the person that works in the church. And that's true. But in this time, the priest was also kind of like a health official. They were like an inspector. And so chances are, these men had already seen the priest. They had already gone to see the priest. And the priest was probably the person who said, get away. Get away from everybody. Go outside of town so that no one else gets sick. Okay? skipped this one. Oh, here's one I was supposed to have already held up. It's this one that says, they probably, when they were thinking, why would we go see the priest? We've already seen the priest. But that's not what Jesus' point was. Jesus was going to do some pretty cool work. And as they were traveling to go see the priest, they listened and obeyed Jesus. Even though they had already seen the priest, they start traveling. And as they're walking to go see the priest, they're healed. All of a sudden, they no longer have the leprosy. No way! Yes way. That's exactly what happened. Jesus sent them to see the priest, and as they started walking, he performed that miracle, and that miracle allowed them to be healthy. It allowed their leprosy to go away. No way again! But it's true. That's exactly what happened. Now, have you ever been sick before? I mean, I have been sick. As some of you know, I recently have been recovering from a surgery. And when you feel sick, you just feel terrible. You wanna lay in bed and just cry and moan. Let me hear your very best, I'm sick, oh, moan. But then, after you start to feel a little bit better, once you start to get healed a little bit, you're like, okay, I feel good. And it's like, yes, I'm going to make it. And you have this like feeling of, woohoo, I'm so excited. I feel better. That's exactly what these men were experiencing. These men had been so sick. Not only had they been so sick, but they had been pushed aside. They had been sent outside of the city. They were nowhere near their family and their friends. They were all alone. So you can imagine that as they were walking and they became healed, they had to be so pumped. They probably, here comes my favorite one, they probably started a dance. Let's see it. Yeah, they did. I bet they did. And they were probably so excited. I bet they even jumped up and down because they were so thrilled that they were no longer sick and that they were going to get to go home and be with their families again. Woo! But here's where it gets crazy. Only one of those men. Do you remember how many men I said were sick at the beginning? Do you remember? All of these fingers. Ten men. There were ten men who were living outside of town. They were all sick with the same disease. They get healed, but only one of them, only one of those men decides to go back and tell Jesus thank you. Here's what I want to do. I want to read this to you from my Bible. From Luke 17, here's what it says. And Jesus asked them this. Jesus asked that one man, wait a minute, weren't all the 10 men healed? Where are the other nine? Didn't anyone else give praise to God except for this one man? And he told that one man, this one man happened to be from Samaria. He was one of the men who was an enemy of the Jewish people, an enemy of people like Jesus. But he recognized, I have to go back and say thank you to Jesus because he's healed me. And Jesus told him, go, get up and go home. Your faith has healed you. So here's what's really important for us to remember in this story. We have to say thank you. Part of having gratitude is saying it. Now you can't just assume that Jesus knew he was, they were thankful. Part of their job was to go back and tell him to say thank you. Can you think of times in your life where somebody does something nice for you and you think, oh, they know that I'm thankful. No, that is not good enough. You have to tell them thank you. Someone shares a pencil with you, say thank you. Someone opens a door for you, 
say thank you. Your mom makes your favorite dinner, say thank you. Whatever it is, your words, your way of expressing gratitude are important. Otherwise, how will these people know? Just because you think they know isn't good enough. You have to be willing to say thank you. <gasps> that was just for fun. All right, so that's our story for today. I hope, I hope, hope, hope that you will remember to say thank you. This entire month, for the whole month of November, we're studying things from our Bible that show us thankfulness, that show us how we can live lives of gratitude. And that's exactly what I hope you will do. It's important. Say thank you. You can do it.